Hey guys, David Offord here. I was recently speaking with one of the guys over at Three Streets Poker, and we came to the conclusion that creating some strategy content uh, in the form of a video would be great for any Three Streets supporters. And um, so here I am. I'm uh, going to create a video. Uh, this video is mainly going to be about a hand I played at 200 NL on Bovada not too long ago. Um, the hand stood out when I played it as a hand I wanted to study and um, throughout the day, each day, I pick three or four hands and save them and try to study them. I think uh, if you play online, uh, even if you play live, I think it's a very good idea to spend at least two hours, if not more, um, studying hands. Um, and the best way to find hands to study or situations is to look at the situations you've played. So this hand I was playing um, in a situation I don't have the hand or I can't find it in my database. So I recreated it in a hand replayer, which I think is um, totally fine here. I will just go ahead and show the hand and talk about it a little bit. So here, the first two seats fold. This guy should actually be on the button. He shouldn't be on the cutoff. Um, I have him raising the cutoff, but he's actually raising the button. So he raises, we'll just say he's the button, and it folds to me, and I defend 7-7. Seven, seven. Flop comes queen 7-4. I check, and he checks back. Turn comes a queen of hearts, and my thought process in game here is that his range is gonna, his checkback range is gonna have a lot of ace highs, maybe some jacks, tens, nines, eights, um, maybe some pairs of sevens, maybe some pairs of fours, smaller pairs, stuff like that, and uh, ace highs. I don't know if I mentioned those that want to get to showdown uh, or just get one street of value. Um, as for queens, he could have some, like, um, I, I think on the flop, he should be betting, like, most of the strong hands, which includes 4-4, four, 7-7, four, seven, seven. I have 7-7, seven, seven, so he doesn't have 7-7, seven, seven. Um, and then queen-queen, much less likely that he has queen-queen, um, so he should be betting all those strong hands on the flop, uh, he should be betting some draws as well, usually, I, I would suggest probably your weaker draws, um, when I say weaker, I mean like lower cards because they just have less showdown value. Um, and the f first ones you want to choose are probably going to be like, you know, 5-6, five, 5-8, five, stuff like that, uh, that connect really, really well at the bottom end of this. So that's the range I give him is uh, as a checkback range, he's going to have just a lot of like showdown value type hands. And hands that don't want three streets of value, but they could go for two or could go for one street of value. Um, so on the turn, I decided to go for a check raise. Um, my thoughts here were that his range is going to be pretty weak and I can use my check raise to punish him for delayed seed betting into me. Um, if I'm always just leading out with my strong hands, then he's just never going to have a hard time um, delayed seed betting me. And he could actually probably create a really strong strategy delayed seed betting me. Um, so what I decided to do was go for the check raise and he checked behind. And the river came a nine. He could have um, a full house, nines full of queens here, or queen nine. I uh, kind of doubt that he's going to have queen nine here because he probably would have bet that on flop or turn. I doubt he's... Uh, most most reasonable players probably checking back queen nine on the flop. I don't see any reason to be betting it. Uh, it's not like that great of a bet unless he has like queen nine of spades and sometimes betting it and trying to get value from flush draws. But then again, still, he's just going to get punished by my check raises a lot um, on flops. So it, it's not that great of a hand to be... Uh, betting. Um, so I don't really expect to be beat here that often. Maybe three sets, of, uh, three combos of 9-9 that he could have here. Other than that, we just w were ahead, and I think going for the check raise is just going to be a really powerful play again. Uh, again, we can use it to um, punish him for his thin value bets on the river, and we can use it to get some of our hands to show down like ace high. Uh, so he just doesn't push us up by ace high all the time. We punish him pushing off, pushing us off of ace high. So I go for the check again, and he decides to check back, and he mucks, and I win. 
So it wasn't really that interesting of a hand. We didn't really do much here. Um, but I found it really interesting in the way I played it, and I kind of wanted to look at the theoretical standpoint on it, um, or look at it from a theoretical standpoint and see, like, what I could have done better and why I should be doing certain things. And so for that, I used PO Solver, which is a um, GTO solver. There's a few of them on the market these days. Um, GTO Range Builder, PO Solver, um, Simple Post Flop, to name a few. I use PO Solver. Um, the version I use is PO Solver Pro. It's probably right around $1,000 at this point in time. Um, if you go over to posolver.com, you can find it there and find the pricing on the different versions. Um, so with this hand, what I did with this program, I put in the bet sizes that I believe he should be using or that I just want to use. Um, and then I put in the board, I put in the starting stack or effective stacks and then the starting pot, which is post flop. And I use 510 blinds as a um, as the sizing in this program. Just it makes this program a lot easier to use. And then the hand ranges go up here. Um, since it's a button open, he's going to be having a pretty wide range here on the button. This is 46% of hands. I think it's somewhat reasonable for a button opening range. I he could go a little bit wider, could go a little bit thinner. Um, I think this is just a pretty reasonable button opening range. Um, I think if you're playing any reasonable strategy, it should be somewhere around this. So I don't think that's much up for discussion. I'm in the big blind versus the button. So I'm going to be three betting pretty much all my tens, all the way down to tens and some of my nines and some of my eights. I'm not three betting eights all the time. And I'm three betting my suited connectors at like a 25% frequency. And then like my smaller suited connectors and suited gappers, I'm betting at a larger frequency. And then um, at the top end of my range. So I'm, I'm betting three betting a more pol polarized range here. So this is what my flatting range in the big blind is going to look like most of the time. I think I do have some like three, four suited or maybe even like more suited connect or suited hands in here. Um, and I may have more offsuit hands, but for the most part, I think this is a pretty reasonable representation of a big blind cold calling range versus a button open. So I don't think that it's that important that we get this exact, but it is, um, you know, it's pretty close to what I think is reasonable. The board again is, uh, queen seven, four, uh, two diamonds and a heart. I solved this already for multiple bet sizings. Uh, we can use PO solver in a way, in a fashion where we put in different bet sizings like this, um, and allow it to solve. And then it'll tell us what it'll pretty much choose more of one sizing that it really favors in certain scenarios, the highest EV. It's going to, it's going to use the highest EV option and this, these GTO solvers, that's what GTO is. It uses the highest EV option. So it's going to be using the more, um, uh, the highest G, um, highest EV option most of the time. And in this scenario, uh, on this flop, it uses a 66% sizing, um, uh, which makes sense because he's, he just wants to be betting his really strong hands and then like draws. Like that's, those are the types of hands he wants to bet on this board. Other than that, he's just not really gonna meet the in position guys, doesn't really wanna bet too much. He wants to use a lot of his uh, weaker hands, weaker queens and sevens and fours and stuff like that to get to showdown, to get, um, he wants to use those to get like jacks and tens and nines to showdown. Uh, so he has to protect his check back range, which would be like jacks, tens, nines, stuff like that with, um, with some queens. And that's exactly what he does. So if you see, we check out a position and then on the flop, um, his strategy should be betting 36% of his hands, which is really a, a very small percentage of hands. He's going to be betting his fours, sevens, queens, kings, aces, ace, queen, and some king, queen. Uh, and then basically he's going to have some snow bluffs right here, like king five, king six which are just gonna be blocker type bluffs. They block king, queen, and six, seven, and five, six. So a lot of, they block a lot of opponents continues. Uh, and then he's gonna have like other strong hands like queen, seven, queen, four, and some straight draw type hands that he's gonna bet. Um, eight, six, eight, five, five, three. And he's also gonna have like the strongest second pair hand that he's gonna bet. So this is um, pretty much the range he should be betting on the flop. 
And what I did was um, I removed the option to check raise by the out of position opponent. So I, if you look at it now, he once we check to him, if the out of position opponent has no option to check raise, now if we click bet and see how it says 0% check raise, when if we clicked bet before, it would 9% check raise. So he, so we should be check raising, you know, 9% of our hands compared to here, I changed it so it's 0%, so I locked it at 0%. And so now when we check to him, instead of betting 36% of hands on this flop, he starts, it starts allowing him to bet 70% of his hands. And so, you know, just most of his hands here. And the reason that he's gonna be allowed to bet most of his hands here is just because of equity realization. Um, so when he's checking back, you can see he checks back 100% of his jacks, tens, nines, He's bet ch uh, checking back a lot of these, and he's checking back a lot of ace high type hands. Like a, a lot of these have a lot of showdown value, and there's no reason to turn them into a bluff. So, if we're checking back all these hands with showdown value, then we need to protect them with some type of types of hands. So we use like king queen, uh, queen ten, queen nine, queen eight, a bunch of queens to check back to protect our check back range. We're just gonna have a lot of hands that have to check back to protect all the hands that check back. So we can't just be going crazy because what happens if we start betting all these hands like this and someone goes, oh, well, he's just betting too much. Well, then what happens is we're able to check raise him like crazy. So the, the proper response to someone C betting too much would be check raising to check raising more often. So here we see that without a check raise option, he C bets too much, uh, which is the exact opposite of that, which was what that implied. So um, let's go back to, so that kind of shows that like the power of the check raise, um, we, use the, we use balance and checking back some of our strong hands to protect some of our weaker hands to get to showdown to realize their equity. They're gonna have equity in the hand, but if you put them like in a, in a program like Pro Poker Tools, right? If you put in like, in this, you know, Jack Jack, if you put, um, let's see, like Jack Jack, and then you put in uh, another hand, uh, Ace, Ace, well, let's put in Ace 5 offsuit, right? Um, and we put, we'll just do it pre flop. Now we see Jack Jack has 70% equity. But what happens if Jack Jack doesn't get to showdown, right? If it sees a flop and then like it's king, queen, whatever, and then the ace five decides to bet, then Jack Jack folds, right? So it doesn't get to realize 100% of its equity. So it's not going to have 70% equity here, uh, realistically. That's a, this isn't an all-in situation, which is it's it's just not a, a, it's not a real life scenario, you know? Like this this rarely happens that we're looking at an all-in situation like this. Uh, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to get those jacks and tens and stuff to be able to realize their equity. We don't want to get punished by our opponent's check raising range by betting these hands. So we have to check them back and then we have to check back some strong hands to really just protect those. And then we have some, you know, weaker hands that are, or some showdown value type hands that can check back. So it goes check, check. Um, and let me actually minimize this. And turn comes a queen of hearts. Now, as you see here, I already solved and I have a 33% sizing. I already solved for three different sizings. It was 33%, 66%, and 100% of pot. And it really favored 33%. And the reason it really favors 33% is because if you look at the range on the turn, we're gonna have a lot of, in our out of position range, we're gonna have a lot of really weak queens here. A lot of sevens, a lot of fours that like to bet. And none of our hands are really like uber strong. We don't just have a ton of strong hands here, right? So we have to be value betting thin. And if we're value betting thin, we're gonna just have a lot of value combos. And therefore, if we wanna remain balanced, we should be betting like a smaller sizing. So a third pot here is very good. Um, and then we also use balance it with bluffs, you know, jack high, 10 high type bluffs. Uh, all our small flush draws, all our straight draws, we're gonna be betting. And then some of um, some of our straight flush draws, straight draw plus flush draw, we're going to be check raising. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. 
So we should be value betting really thin here on the turn. Um, and therefore we should be using a small sizing. This was uh, really something I learned about this spot. Um, and poker in general, you know, it's it's, uh, it's a game that you can learn a lot about if you just do a lot of study work. And this is something that really I found interesting was that you use a really small sizing here. But it makes sense because we have a lot of weak hands. We don't have a ton of strong hands. So we're not betting uh, a polarized range here. We're just going to be value betting a merge range. Like this is a very thin value range. Now, if you see like the ace highs, we're not going to be betting like ace highs and king highs that often. And the reason we're not going to be betting those is because they have too much showdown value. There's no reason to turn those types of hands into bluffs. If we're using, if we're turning these types of hands into bluffs, then someone can just raise us. So there's no reason to be betting most of these hands. Um, and if we're checking them, then we're going to have to be checking some of our other hands to protect them. Because if we just always check ace highs and king, si king highs and we never have any strong hands, he can just punish us. Um, and make us fold all the ace highs and king highs, and then therefore we never get to realize our equity at those types of hands. So, so what I decided to do is go for a check raise with uh, sevens. And if you look at it here, it goes for a check. Green is check. It goes for a check most of the time. Also, fours go for a check most of the time. And then queen seven and queen four both mostly bet. They do check sometimes, but they both mostly bet. So we're, we're going to be betting here, and then we're going to be check raising with hands that he can't have better. So. He never has us beat with queen seven and queen four when we bet. And then he never has us beat when we check raise with seven, seven, and four, four, because he's never going to have queen, queen on the turn once he checks back. He's never going to have queen seven and queen four because he would have bet those on the flop. So he's capped, and we can punish his capped range by if he decides to delay seed bet and then we can punish him with our really strong hands. So if he bets with like queen jack, we can just punish him with a check raise. So that's what I did is I went for the check raise. And if you look at the check raising range, if if he did go with a bet, we would be check raising 13% of the time. And this is actually using a small sizing. We're not even 3x here. It goes 65 chips uh, to 166. I think it would favor something like 240 chips here, maybe even like 300 chips, just a lot larger sizing. That way it can shove the river a lot easier. Um, therefore, the raise amount, it should probably be right, right around 10% or 9%, I would assume, uh, with a larger sizing. Um, but, because it's going to be more polarized. Uh, but I think, I mean, even with the sizing, we can learn something from it. And that is, we're check raising with our strong hands. Sevens, fours, some queen four, some queen seven, some ace queen, some king queen. Um, and then a lot of bluffs. Uh, we're going to be check raising with flush jaws that block their value hands. Um, seven, eight, they block king, queen. We block uh, queen, jack that we're going to be check raise bluffing with, uh, with flush jaws. Um, and then for the most part, we're going to be check calling with like our ace high flush jaws that have a lot of showdown value still, and they still have a lot of equity in the hand. For the most part, we don't really want to be raising our strong showdown value hands. There's no reason to. Uh, I think a lot of people make the mistake of going, oh, well, he bet here, I think I can push him off a, a, a hand. Well, you don't really need to push him off a hand because, like, a lot of his range, you're still ahead of with, like, ace-jack, ace-ten, ace-nine, ace-eight, stuff like that. So really trying to see showdown with these hands is really good. And then, um, you know, if we go back, um, it does bet a little bit of ace-four and ace-seven, both have a pair though. Uh, for the most part though, he's just not going to be betting those. So, so that's what what we do with uh, the check raise. Um, we are going to be punishing him for thin value bets, um, and then we also balance it with some like combo draws, like eight five suited of diamonds and hearts, eight six suited uh, stuff like that. And that that way we'll have straights if the straights ever appear on the river. So let's go check check and look at the nine of clubs river is what it was and we'll look at the strategy for out of position again out of position should be uh value betting king nine here uh pretty much any nine other than the ace nine and it looks like ace nine goes for a check call to protect its checking range which is reasonable um i kind of find this odd that it's betting smaller ones and then check calling with uh i think it's check calling I don't see a check raising ace nine. Yeah, it's check calling with ace nine. So I find it odd that it uh, instead of um, betting with ace nine and then check calling with the weaker ones, it 
check calls with the stronger one and then bets with the weaker ones. And I guess he's just getting thin value here. And then it balances it with some, you know, obviously some full houses, some 7-7. Seven, seven. It does check some 7-7. Seven, seven, um, but for the most part, I think it is betting here on the river. And then it's check raising 4-4. Four, four. So you can see it also checks some queen 7 and queen 4. So it really mixes hands everywhere. And as long as you really understand um, what you're doing with your whole range, you can help other hands in your range get to showdown a lot better. And check raising is one of the most powerful plays to be able to um, utilize um, in your arsenal to get hands to showdown, um, to realize their equity. You know, so now you see um, we're checking all our ace highs and a lot of our king highs still. We just still don't need to turn them into bluffs. We have a lot of weaker hands that if you see like all the queen highs, jack highs, ten highs, all these weak hands are the ones that are red. All the ones with showdown value are going to be checking. So there's no reason to be, no reason to be uh, turning those ones into bluffs. We do turn a little bit of king eight here into a bluff, and I think the reason we would be turning that into a bluff is just it blocks king queen, blocks eight nine, blocks eight seven, uh, blocks king nine. It, it's just going to be a lot. It, it blocks a lot of his calling range. Um, so it's actually a pretty good combo to be bluffing here, along with like jack-10. Jack-10 is going to block 10-9, jack-9, um, queen-jack, uh, I don't think it has really much 10-7, maybe 10-7 suited, um, but yeah, for the most part. So you can see that um, using the check raise is really powerful in getting other hands to showdown and really punishing him uh, for trying to not let us get to showdown. Um, if you're not using the check raise enough, it's something that you really should be um, using to help other parts of your range, uh, and that's that's the reason you want to you want to be able to help other parts of your range mainly, um, because if he's just blowing you off these hands, then uh, there's going to be a lot of hands that you would have won with ace high, or you could have chopped stuff like that, where you just had a lot of value in the pot, and he's just going to take that value from you. So, especially if people are overseas betting check raising is uh the way to go um so i thought that was a pretty cool hand and i hope everybody finds it interesting um it's a pretty quick analysis and um leave a comment and let me know what you guys think if you guys want to see a, another video on something else leave a comment and let me know what your thoughts are all right guys if you're looking for a place to play you can get 27% rake back by using the bonus code HAPPYRB at americascardroom.com.